Hello there! Welcome back to Triplus Tutorials. My name is Triplus, as always, I'm the only one making videos right here. And today it is time to go a little bit more into my home uh, automation project. So, stepping up my home assistant game, and today we will be using Node Red. So, in short, what is Node Red? As far as I can tell, it's basically a programming language without you having to do any programming at all. So it's just connecting nodes and making it do actions and checking the state of certain things and so on and so forth. I haven't used this myself in the past, so this episode will be as much as discovery for you as it will be for me. Uh, of course, I will have the possibility to skip here and there uh, the video, allowing me to figure some things out while you guys just uh, see my thinking process in one second or something. I have created a small little slide over here, which shows you what automations I want to create already and that I can create already with the current setup that I have available. As mentioned in my previous video, I'm not able to connect to all different components yet because my other home assistant is still my master home assistant. And because of that, I'm not able to connect everything to this MQTT broker yet, making it a little bit more difficult to do what I want to do. But I'm already able to do some. So as mentioned earlier, most of my config right now is related to my aquariums because again, they have most of the sensors. So we'll also be starting with one of those. So for shrimp, they can be quite sensitive, especially in summertime. So what I want to do is that if the temperature of my shrimp tanks will go above 27 degrees Celsius. I want to turn on a fan that will blow on the water surface, which will cool it down a little bit. And because at that point the temperature is 27 degrees, I also want to know that. So I want to receive an alert over Telegram to let me know that my aquariums are getting quite high temperatures. Another automation I want to do is that my thread free remotes, uh, they, they are all battery powered and they do send their battery data to Home Assistant or their battery percentage to Home Assistant. And if it goes below 10% and I may have to tweak this number, I want to also have an alert on Telegram stating, look, your battery is about to die, maybe get some new ones. And then finally, I also want to do something with my home state or my location state and also between certain hours. So I have a, a Raspberry Pi, which is connected to a screen and which should boot up a dashboard. And I'm going to try to incorporate that somewhere as well. So those are the current automations that I see that are possible with what I currently have installed already. For the home um, state or the my location, I will be using a temporary sensor or a temporary state that I will be able to select home or away because one of my future projects is also to connect this home assistant to an NGIX server and allow only the API calls to go through, which will allow me to use everything even possibly without VPN. So let's get started. So as mentioned earlier, I have a node red docker running and all I needed to do was start the docker and I basically, it showed me the URL I needed to connect to and this is it. So this is where I'm at right now. I've done a little bit of research already and watched some videos, so I think it should be fine to start. But the first thing we need to do, of course, is to install some additional, what they apparently call nodes. So the first one will be home assistant. Okay, needs to be here, so in install. So the no thread home assistant websocket, I need to install this one. And I also want the telegram bot. So this one, I also want to install. And for now, those two will be sufficient. Okay, so it seems everything has been added. We have the Node Telegram and we have the Node Home Assistant over here, which means that when I scroll down here, yeah, we see Telegram and we see Home Assistant. 
So the first thing we need to do is connect this to Home Assistant. From my understanding, it was quite simple. So you drag in any node, I think it's called, from the, the, the view on the left. You double click on it and then you see server. So here you are able to add your own server. Now let's call it Home Assistant because it's exactly that. Uh, it's indeed running on localhost on port 8123, as you can see here. So for the access token, we go back to Home Assistant. We click on our own user symbol, whatever. And then here we want to create a token. The token will be named node red. Let's copy it. And let's update it. So hopefully right now, if I type trim, okay, you probably haven't deployed since adding it server. Okay, let's click on deploy then. And let's try it now. So if I now write shrimp. Okay, so apparently the autocomplete is working now. <laughs> I didn't change anything. I think it just needed to, to, to look for everything needed. So let's do this. Of course, I have three shrimp regs, so I'm going to copy this node multiple times. Okay, so this is a few, yeah, ten, more than 10 minutes in the future, and I've been trying to figure some things out. The hardest part for me was to understand what node exactly I needed to use to, to trigger certain actions. And then I also need to figure out some, some Telegram stuff, but that's just very specific to that module. In general, it looks quite easy to set up certain things, but again, you need to really understand what each node does exactly. So what did I do? I first started with this template node, which is basically executing this. So as you can see here, this is the template that I'm using and it's checking if the temperature is above 27 degrees. I was hoping that just having this would, when the template changed, it would trigger it, but that is not the case apparently. So what I needed to do was add some triggers here you can see. So if the state changed, yeah, then it will go, go further. And I needed to do that for the three aquariums. If one of those changed, it will check the template that I just showed you. And then it will go into a switch to verify is it yeah, zero or, or not zero. Zero is basically false. And yeah, not zero is true. So as you can see here, we have false. So then it will go to the, the turn off. If it's true, it will go to the turn on. And in the end, send the telegram message. Now I have MQTT spy right over here. And you will be able to see if I click pub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish a message that the temperature is 28 degrees. So if I publish this, you see that here it states it was 28 degrees. Success, it turned to true. So it turned on the shrimp fence. And as you saw, I also got a message here in the bottom right, if you scroll a few minutes back, that indeed there was something up with the temperature in my shrimp tank. Now, if we wait a little bit longer, and it shouldn't be that long anymore, I think 30 seconds or so, you will see that the temperature will reset back to its original value, which is around 23 degrees, I think. There we go. Uh, so 23 degrees, is it greater than 27? No, because all of them are, as you can see here, all of them are below 24 or 23, even no, 24. So it turns off the fence. And that's it. That's our first automation. Now, I did lose a lot of time on the understanding the exact home assistant node because I was hoping this one would just trigger when it detected the change, but that's not the case. So that's why I have these. And also I needed to figure out the telegram logic because you need to do some JSON modifications. I, I've written a function and I'm not really loving this because it's marketed as you do not need to code, but there again in the actual documentation it states that you need to create a function 
to do exactly that. And I'm trying to find the exact documentation. There we go. So if we check out this, you see indeed that they show a function to do that. And that's a little bit annoying, but I think we can live with that. I was hoping to create some more automations, but this one took already quite some time. But I hope using this, I'm able to now easily create some more modifications. So let's end it here for today. We have quite a fancy automation, if I say so myself. And let's make some other changes. So let's change the temperature of tank 1 to 27. I know 27.5. There we go, it turned on, tank one. And I also got a notification, I heard it, but you guys, didn't, it didn't come up for whatever reason here. So, again, ending here, I think I already said that, but uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you again in the next one. Bye.